everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, behind me here is a 2008 Saturn View that I believe has a stretch chiming chain. So I purchased this car from my cousin. Uh, he took it to a shop. They quoted him like seven grand to change the timing chain. So I took it, did a little bit of research. I wanted to verify that it was actually a timing chain. Uh, the symptoms I got are when you get on it, like you're coming out from a stop or something like that or getting on the freeway, it really lugs a little bit and then kind of picks up and like it's kind of like a searching, you know, surging. Um, almost like it was low fuel or like a fuel pump issue, but I verified all that was work, all that was correct. Um, and after researching it some more, I found that these 3.6 liter GM motors um, have kind of a tendency to stretch the timing chain and affect the timing on it. So, um, but let me show you what kind of codes I'm getting. So, I've got a P0366, which is a camshaft position sensor code, a P0017, which is a crankshaft position sensor code and a P0330 knock sensor. Um, I believe all these are related to the timing chain being stretched out. What happens with the timing chain, timing chain stretches out is that it affects the timing, the ignition timing, which affects um, how you how the engine um, times the spark. Um, that's why we got the knock sensor code likely. Uh, so if the engine is not firing in the correct position, you'll get a pre-detonation, uh, which could throw your knock sensor code. And then these two codes here are just because it's continuously kind of adjusting it uh, for the timing for the stretch of the chain. So pretty common on these engines. So I went ahead and purchased everything I need from Rock Auto um, and I'll show you what I got. All right, here's my big old pile of parts I've got. Since I am keeping this car, uh, I'm gonna also be replacing the water pump, uh, the oil pump and the pickup tube inside the oil pan. Um, the reason for that is because when you do this job, you have to take all that stuff off anyway, minus the sump pump, or minus the pickup tube and the oil, oil pan. So I figured if I'm in there, it's only an extra 30 to 40 bucks. Let me go ahead and do it uh, for the longevity of the car. Now, would I do this if I was just going to sell it? Eh, maybe not, depending on the condition. That's all about take, tearing into it and seeing what it looks like and then making a decision from there. Anyway, so... Um, I will link to the description below um, the part numbers and everything and how much this stuff costs uh, from Rock Auto. But altogether, with the oil filter, um, I think it came out to just over $400 or so after shipping and everything. Depending on where you live, it's, it might be different. So, um, but yeah, that's everything. Timing chain kit. Now, this timing chain, this timing chain setup is three different chains. You got a chain for the cam on both banks. So there's two chains for cam and then one on the bottom that runs the oil pump and all that stuff so it's pretty extensive this kit also comes with uh, some gears um, the sliders for the chain tensioners all that stuff now i i could have spent a lot less money to do this job and went with the economy uh on rock auto it's pretty nice to have kind of economy then you got your standard and high performance you know if you've ever been on there you know what i'm talking about uh, but again, since I'm keeping the car, I want it to last a little while. So I went with kind of your standard, you know, step up from economy. I didn't want to break the bank, but also I uh, didn't want to go cheap. So that's what I got here. And uh, so the next step is to kind of tear into the car. Okay, so I've done a number of front wheel drive timing belts, timing chains, um, and they're all basically, you kind of have to work on them in the same manner. A lot of the stuff has to come off. Your tire and your inner fender on the passenger side have to come off. You have to disconnect the engine mount and you have to lower the engine down to get at the timing cover. All that work um, is likely going to be done basically sitting down here and facing into the engine. So um, I'm going to start tearing all this stuff apart. I'm going to get it up on jack stands. Uh, I got to have to, I got to drain the oil. I got to drain the coolant to do the water pump um, to pull the oil pan gasket. So I'm going to get it up in my teeth here and then start tearing into it. And then after I take some of this stuff off, I'll do kind of a recap. All right, got it up in the air, got the wheel off. Uh, not much of an inner fender, it's just a little section right here I pulled off. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I don't have light down here, but this thing just kind of sits in here. Real easy to take off, it's these little plastic, you guys have seen these before, these little plastic body um, clips. You just pull them out of the hole there and then the whole thing comes out. Flat tip screwdriver is all you need for that. So anyway, I moved it to the top. Um, air cleaner is disconnected, so all you have to do for this is just pull this um, a uh, bit line off right here. This is plastic. This pulls right out. Uh, undo the hose clamp here. Um, you're going to have to pull off your uh, mass airflow sensor connector right here. And then you got a couple 10 millimeter bolts on the side. And then this whole thing just kind of 
pulls up like so. Now I can tell that someone's been in here because I had a bolt missing and then this clamp right here is loose too. So someone's already kind of messed around with this. And so, oh, that's broken now. I'm interested to see what they find. So once that's all off, you got a lot of extra room right here to pull your mounts off to get to your timing access cover. So I'm gonna continue on. Okay, update. We got uh, coolant draining. Um, to drain this coolant, there's actually a little valve right. Uh, I want to point to it right here. You unscrew that. Don't pull it all the way. You just want it to go straight down. Um, if you pull it all the way, it'll shoot out towards the engine, as you can see there. And then, oh, and to get that, you have to pull this cover off right here, which is right there. That's pretty simple, just a few screws. Uh, then uh, I was looking at these valve covers. So these valve covers have to come off to access the timing chain. Um, to get the valve covers off, it looks like I'm gonna have to pull the intake, pun them off. And I did not get O-rings or anything for that, so I'm gonna have to add that to my um, parts run list here. Uh, but to get this intake, pun them off, a um, few things. You gotta pull the connector off for the throttle position. Um, these little connectors are kind of unique. You pull this little gray piece back like this, and then you can press down on that clip, and then that'll come off. Then you have to pull off your manifold absolute pressure sensor, which is here, which is just a simple little kind of push down tab clip pulls off. Uh, I'm also pulling this line off right here for my coolant overflow tank. Um, that's just a matter of pulling off these little metal clips here. I got to cut a few zip ties and a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and this whole thing should swing out of the way. Um, going forward here, I got a couple other vacuum hoses, um, some injector harnesses, clips, same clips, pull those off and then all that should come apart. Now the intake plenum is held in, it looks like by these bolts here. There's some bolts inside here and then the same on the other side and that whole thing should come off pretty easily and that I'm hoping will give me access to the valve covers without any interference after that. One thing I wanted to show you guys here is I got this little plastic line I pulled off here on the back side of the intake plenum. Um, it goes to this little diaphragm back here. So these are kind of unique. Um, to pull these off, there's a little lever here. Uh, you know, you can see that, just that little nub sticking out. What you do, let me see if I can get my screwdriver. Uh, what you do basically with your finger, not with a screwdriver, but for demonstration purposes, is you push that little lever down like that, and then that releases it off that, because you got to get it past that, that end right here, this little ridge, and the same on the other side of it. And that'll pull this off. Be real careful with these plastic lines because they're preformed. They're not very malleable, especially if they've been in the car for a long time. They are subject to snap pretty easily. So um, just a little word of warning. Okay, got the intake plenum off, got loads of room now, should have no problems. Uh, do yourself a favor, take some masking tape or something, stuff some rags in here or whatever, um, cover those intake ports up. The last thing you want is to do all this work and find that you dropped a nut or something down in there and then boom, your, your engine's toast. So the next thing after that is I need to take uh, this coolant pipe off and the coolant pipe has a couple bolts down here. Let me get this light down here. Um, but in order to get to those bolts down here, you gotta pull off all this uh, mount mess down here. So. The next step after that is get a bottle jack or a floor jack, whatever. Get it up underneath the oil pan, put a block of wood or something so you don't dent the oil pan or crack or anything like that. Get something to support it because once you pull all this stuff off of here, it's going to be loose. So you got two nuts right here holding this black support on. Those are 19 millimeter. And these three bolts that go into this support here are 15 millimeter. Once you get them up and loose, then you can just take this thing up out of here like so. There, now the engine is freestanding on the front end, so you never want to move that thing unless you're going to have a support. Um, unless you're going to have a support to uh, hold it up. 
they do make a crossbar that goes across your fender wells to kind of you can chain it up or something i'm gonna have to think of something because eventually i will have to move that floor jack uh, the next step after that is you're gonna have to you're gonna have to remove this uh brace right here and that's just uh uh, some more 19 millimeters i believe to hold that pull that out and then you can get to these bolts to hold on the uh water neck for the uh the upper radiator hose all right got the water neck off of here um two 10 millimeter bolts pull that off that's pretty easy there's an o-ring in there all right so the next thing i'm gonna do is pull this belt off here do yourself a favor take a picture of the belt orientation save you the headache uh of putting it back on later that way you can kind of tell you which pulleys it goes around and over and everything so Got the uh, socket wrench here on the tensioner. The tensioner is a half inch drive. Uh, I got my 3H drive ratchet with an adapter on there and we're gonna pull this thing up and take the belt off of these pulleys here. And the alternator, once you get it loose enough then you can just let go of the tensioner and pull your ratchet back out. And then finish pulling the belt off the rest of the way. All right, uh, power steering reservoir is the next thing I pull off here. Um, this has got a uh, let me light. There's not enough light in it. Okay, so this reservoir is kind of a pain. Not too bad, but it's kind of a pain. You got a, a 10 millimeter. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, a 10 millimeter bolt here. A 10 millimeter bolt on this side, and then a. What size is that? No, no, excuse me. 13, 13, and a 10. And on the back end, um, around the back, you can't see because it's kind of wedged. You have to shove your hand back there. There's, there's one, another 10 millimeter bolt here that sits in the back. It's got a little studs. You're going to deep, deep socket to get that out of there. Then once you have that all loose, then you can just, should be able to just shove that in the back like I got it there. You're going to leave the hoses attached to it. Don't want to break those loose. Um, so I'm hoping that gives me enough to get the valve cover off. So once that's done, um, my goal here, next step is to get all these uh, position sensors here for your variable valve timing on both ends. And then I'm going to pull those off and get all the, and the uh, coil plugs off and kind of move this harness off to the side. So uh, I want to get these valve covers off here, get the timing chain exposed from the top end, and then I'll work on getting it down and pulling the cover off after that. Okay, I got all the coils out, all the connectors off. I'm gonna see if I can get this valve cover off of here now. I got all these 10 minute bolts off here. There's a bunch in the back. Pay attention, some of them are kind of hidden. You don't wanna be prying on this thing and then crack it. So I'm gonna see if I can get it up now. Hopefully I've got everything loose and this should come up pretty easily at this point. It's almost everything. So you don't have to pull the bolts out, out. They kind of lock in place. Uh, the, the bushing, rubber bushing thing that they're mounted in kind of holds them. So you don't have to pull them. You just got to make sure they're unthreaded all the way. Okay, second day on the Saturn here. Uh, kind of gone ahead and done a lot before I even turned the camera on today. Um, I pulled the alternator off over here because um, you have to get it off because there's cover bolts on here. One thing about this alternator is it's got one of these uh, idler pulleys on it. And this idler pulley, you try to it off, it's going to hit the frame of the car right here. So you just, it's two bolts on the top and then the idler pulley bolt and then take the power wire off and the thing comes up. So um, it's not that big a deal. Get it out of the way. It'll save you some headache. Uh, then I went ahead and I pulled the uh, water pump off. You got to pull the pulley and then undo the bolts for the water pump. Uh, the next thing is the harmonic balancer. I've got a puller on it and I'm slowly pulling it back. Uh, hard to see. Hold on, let me get some light in here for you guys. Uh, kind of got a socket in here and I've got the puller in the inside and it's pulling. It's starting to come off. Um, this is uh, not probably not the correct puller for this so uh, 
those of you who are yelling at me through the comments, you can save it. I'm, it's working. I don't really care. So it's coming off. And then after that, the next thing is the power steering pump. And then I can pull the rest of the front cover bolts off and this whole thing should come off uh, relatively easy. Okay, I'm about to pull the, I already got some of this off it. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that the power steering pump, you got a bolt that goes into the front cover this way, and then you got a bolt that goes behind it in this way. And the easiest way I found to get to it was down here in the wheel well, and you just reach up in there and get it. So uh, just be aware, just two bolts, and then that can swing out of the way. And uh, then the rest of the bolts around where the harmonic balancer, the crank pulley was, and this uh this plate that comes off right here and it looks like i'm about ready to actually pull this thing out so i'm gonna set the camera down here let's see um see if it comes off easily here didn't really fight me once i had all the bolts off i'm just making sure it's gonna slide all the way and it looks like these sensors out of here actually that might be the smart way to go I think I'm going to pull these out next time. That was probably dumb. I should have pulled those. Uh, so, but that's it. That's the front cover. So, disassembly is nearly complete. I'm going to set this off to the side. Somewhere where stuff's not going to get damaged. And then, the next step is to make sure we time this thing before I pull the chains off of here. But, so, you got cam phasers here oil powered cam phasers you got a slider chain slider i'm gonna replace chain slider chain slider slider and then the tensioner which is this guy here that's gonna get replaced chain, chain tensioner here that's gonna get replaced a slider that's gonna get replaced another tensioner another slider so you got three tensioners one two three four five sliders uh and this is the this is the technical portion of this job uh, where if I get it wrong then uh, I grenade an engine so I'm gonna take my time here you hey guys how loose that is there I haven't done anything to it and I can almost slide that off the slider there so that tells me that the shop that diagnosed this was probably correct that one's loose and then this bottom one here I can almost I can almost slide that off off the slider there um, so that's the uh, the bank closest to the driver and then this side here seems to be pretty good this side seems to be pretty tight still I got no movement from that but uh, that gives me a little confidence actually that what I'm the work I'm putting into it is not for nothing it's it's uh it's worth doing so I'm actually pretty happy to see that honestly um, I may still look to see how much these phasers are since I'm in here if they're not too much if they're not too much of a pain to replace I may just do them anyway but uh, get a little research first all right now day three of this uh, project here um, I got all the spark plugs out of the car to make it easier for me to crank over and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing the timing now the timing on this is kind of funny a little overly complicated but you know that's what it is so you've got two stages of timing here so you've got your right side i know i'm using my left hand but this is considered the right side and then you get the left side here you have to set this right right bank in stage two timing before you can remove the timing chain and then you crank it over again and then you set the bank 
this bank in stage one timing before you can remove the primary chain and the timing chain for this side. And, and we'll go through the process. There's actually a couple videos um, with a couple people doing this outside of the car on engine stand. Really easy to see if you want to better understand how the process works, but I'm going to go through and do it while it's in the car. Um, it's really, it's really not that complicated. Okay, I've got some paint marks on the crankshaft. One, one on the crank sprocket. There, a yellow mark. And on the oil pump, there are two dimples. Oh, Jesus! I can get this camera to sit correctly. There's two dimples. There's one here, a, a yellow paint mark, and there's one down here as well. So you're gonna set the dimple in the crank sprocket to the dimple in the paint mark on the oil pump here for the phase two timing to remove the timing chain on the right bank. Then you can rotate the crank shaft over to line the dimple on the sprocket to the dimple on the oil pump on this side to take off the primary chain and the chain on bank one for stage one timing. Um, to remember when you crank this over that you have to double check and make sure that the very the, the cam sprockets are in the right location because the crankshaft will rotate one time for every half rotation of the cam. So you'll have to remember to make sure it's not one uh, 360 degrees out. Excuse me, the crank will rotate twice for every one rotation of the cam. Okay, got the time marks lined up there. Now let's go to the top. and see what we're lined up up here. So we're not quite lined up up here. And a quick easy way to tell is the back of the cam, they'll have flats which are actually pointing straight down right now. The, you can't see them, but you want the flats pointing straight up. So what we gotta do is spin the crank 100, or excuse me, 360 degrees around again, and the flats on the back of the cam should be facing up. Okay, so now you can see the flats are facing up on the backs of the cam. Now that I have it, and once I've rotated it 360 degrees, anyway. And now this one, gosh dang it, this one, this one bank is ready for the timing chain to be removed from it at this point. So I'm going to take off all these 10 millimeter bolts for the uh, chain sliders, the chain tensioner, and the tensioner slider. And I'm also going to take off the idler sprocket down here, at the, down here at the bottom too. So your idler sprocket, chain, sliders, everything. And then I'm also going to do these phasers while I'm over here too. Alright, got all the sliders, timing chain, and everything off here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is replace or take these phasers off. Now, you don't want to move the cam any and get it out of time. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself a three-quarter inch wrench or 19 whatever and make sure everything drops down. There's a spot on the camshaft right here that's hexed. You put your wrench on that to hold the cam in place and then use a socket to pull off the phaser. Okay, now here's the new cam phaser. Here's the old one. The intake cam phasers are specific to the side they go on. The exhaust ones don't matter. Uh, they're, the intake ones are two different part numbers. The easiest way to tell 
is that it'll say IN intake and it'll have a little R for right side. And remember the right side, that's the bank closest to the passenger compartment, closest to the firewall. This side here will be have IN for intake and an L for left side. So make sure you're paying attention when you're reinstalling them. Um, the back side of these have a little dowel pin so you can't really mess up the orientation when you're putting it back on as long as the cam stays in alignment. Now my phaser that I got came with a Teflon or some form of walk, you know, spacer that goes right here and it's got a flat part on it. Can you see that? The flat part goes down the bottom here because that's the flat part of the housing. And then at this point, all you're going to do is align the dowel up with the notch in the cam. And you can reinstall it. You know what? I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. I don't think that's necessary. Just like that. All right, got the new phasers in, torqued down these torque to 43 foot pounds. Uh, now I'm going to move the crank over to the other timing mark to uh, do stage one and remove the primary chain and the secondary chain here and do it all over again on this side. So I went, around, went from that mark over to that mark and it's not lined up. The flats are facing down, remember. The crank is going to go twice for every uh, one cam rotation. So you're going to have to go one more time. Make sure those flats are up on this side. All right, so I'm going, I'm going ahead and remove the idler sprocket now from the um, right bank. The idler sprockets for each bank are unique to the bank, so make sure when you pull it off, and uh, you match it up with the um, with the one that came in the kit to make sure you're putting on the right side. This is why I like to do one side at a time and torque everything down. That way, I don't miss any steps. Um, now the kit kind of gives you a helping hand. It pre-installs the bolts for you in the direction that they're supposed to go. So that's kind of nice. So you don't really have to worry about um, that if you get it mixed up. The sprockets are different in the way that the chains are mounted on here and these shoulder washers here. So just take a good look, pay attention. Um, it's it's real, rather obvious once you look at them that they are different and just do one side at a time and torque them down to 43 foot pounds. There it goes. Gotta pull it straight. And now at this point you can go ahead and pull the sprocket off the crankshaft. All right, so I'm pulling the oil pump off now. Pretty simple process. Three bolts, the whole thing slides out. Now, if you're not doing the oil pump and you're doing this timing chain, there's a slider here for the primary chain that runs both the uh, secondary chains. And that slider is on a bracket that has two bolts that go into the oil pump. Um, if you're not replacing the oil pump, it's recommended that you pull the slider piece off of the bracket rather than unbolting it because the two housings of this water pump or this oil pump are specifically torqued. And I'll show you what I mean when I pull this thing off. So this is the bracket and the kit comes with this bracket as well. But the, these bolts are specific for this oil pump and they have to be torqued specifically and it's not recommended you mess with it. Um, take the slider piece off of the bracket and it just undoes, you can just pry it up with a screwdriver, it's pretty simple. Since I'm replacing the whole thing, I'm replacing the whole unit, it comes with a new bracket and slider and I don't have to touch it anyway. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, I got a little ahead of myself without turning the camera on, but I got the oil pump in, I'm getting ready to torque the bolts down on there. Um, but what I didn't show you yet was that I filled up the new oil pump with oil 
So you got an inlet and outlet holes here. I just used some oil I had on hand, fill them up, and I kind of turn this, turn the pump like this, kind of fill the cavities up. That way it's not running dry when you first start this thing up. Kind of a little bit primed, you know, like you prime a master cylinder, sort of the same thing. Alright, here I torque the oil pump bolts. Those are about 16 foot pounds. Only three of them, which should be pretty easy. All right, oil pump cam sprocket are on. Um, my sprocket was pretty snug, the new one, so I found a socket that fits over that and I was able to tap it on. I didn't have to put a lot of effort, just, just enough to install it straight all the way and it'll butt up against the shoulder of the crankshaft there. All right, got everything put on and torque. All the phases are on. Tor torque to 43 foot pounds. All my idler gears are on. Torque to 43 foot pounds. Oil pumps torque down. Uh, all I re uh, painted all my timing marks, and now we're gonna get ready to stick this chain on here. All right, went ahead and laid the chain down on here. So what you want to do is the chain you get in your kit. This is the kit that I got. Link. There's three colored links. They're this in my case they're gray, some of them are pink, some of them are yellow. But there you got two links that are kind of close together, they go in the cam phasers, and those correspond with the the dot. There's also a triangle on the cam phaser. Let's ignore that. You want to go to the dot, which is God, I'm doing a horrible camera job. Right there. Gray link, yellow dot on the intake. And then on this side you have a gray link yellow dot on the exhaust. There's also a triangle, you want to go to the dot. Now, on the bottom, you have the idler sprocket, and there's a little hole. I'm making you guys dizzy, aren't I? There's a little hole on the bottom of the sprocket where you should look, be able to look through and see that last gray link down there. So that hole lines up right where that gray link is. And once you get it all in position, you can put all the uh, all the sliders and the tensioner back on this side too. Okay, I've got the slider on here. You're gonna have to lift the chain up a little bit to slide that thing in there and then just snug these bolts down because we're gonna torque them later. Now remember, you're gonna. This thing can still move around down here. This idler. So make sure when we put everything together, and before we pull the pin for the tensioner, we're gonna double check the alignment on that and our marks up here. Now I'm gonna put the swing arm assembly on on this side that push that the tensioner pushes on. Um, they're side specific. They they look different too. So pay attention. Um, easy way to tell is on the one you pull off. The GM version of it will say left hand lh left hand and obviously the other one will say right hand so we're putting on the left hand one on this side okay again we're matching matching um the Tensioners are side specific and the gaskets look different from left to right so make sure you're taking the old one you pulled off and matching it up with the um, new one. And remember, do not pull that pin until you're ready for the tension to be applied. Okay, got the chain on, got the sliders on, the tensioners on, I went ahead and pulled the pin, it's got tension now, I double checked all my alignments, torqued everything, these are 18 foot pounds, and everything is lined up, now I can move on to the bottom chain here. Alright, so, the bottom chain here, you've got marks, 
on the idlers. I've already marked it yellow here. Got a dimple here, I marked yellow. And then on the crank, that same dimple we've always been using. And so on the chain, again, we've got these gray links. And there's one, there's one, there's one. These gray links, each one of those, there's three of them. Each one of those gray links is gonna line up against one of those marks. Let's see here. Okay, got everything assembled and in place. Double check. Your marks line up with the gray uh, chain link. Um, got the tensioner bolted in. Double check your top marks. Make sure your top marks are aligning. Gray link with the yellow. And then same thing on this side. Gray link with the yellow mark or dimple. And at this point, we can pull the tensioner pin. And that's it for the primary chain. It's all assembled and now we're ready to assemble this other side. All right, I went ahead and reassembled everything. Line, line the gray, gray links up with the yellow marks. Gray link, yellow mark. Um, got the sliders on, tensioner on, pulled the pin. Uh, down here, if you can see it, the gray link on the sprocket is supposed to line up with the hole in the back, sort of like we did with this sprocket here, where you can see this sort of like here, where you can see the, the yellow link through the hole. But you're gonna, the link on this side is gonna be that gray link is gonna be in front, right in front of the hole. Uh, in better view of it, maybe we'll be down here. So yeah, so you got that gray link, and then right behind it is a little hole in the sprocket. As long as those are lined up, you're good to go. All right, one thing I like to do, especially with these interference heads, is once I got everything where I think it's good, I'll rotate this thing around a few times here and make sure I don't feel anything binding. Everything moves freely and I've got everything lined up still. So I'll, I, once I do it a few times, I'll go around and line my mark back up again, starting with the stage one. Right there, double check my stuff up here. Yep, cams are flat, we're good. Marks, yellow marks are right where they should be again. We're good there. And then take it over. Where'd my wrench go? And then take it back over to stage two timing. Is right about there and then double check yep cams are flat on that side and again my marks are lined up again here so there I'm confident everything there is timed correctly all right at this point what I want to do is I want to prepare this front cover for installation uh, I remember when I removed this that these actuators here are uh, um, in the way so what I'm going to do is pull these actuators out. Then I'm going to prepare all the surfaces, the ceiling surfaces, um, clean them up, get them ready for um, RTV. And then I'm going to remove the um, seal here, the cover seal. Uh, I got a new one of those sitting here. And then on the other side of it here, I have the seal, the O-ring seal for the back side of the water pump. That's going to go in there. And then um, before I install it, I'll double check the surfaces on the engine and then apply a thin coat of RTV. I like to use uh, Ultra Gray. I kind of swear by this stuff. I've used it my whole career. It works really well. So let's get going on this, I guess. All right, got the actuators out of here. I don't know, I don't think they were specific. They're just on off actuators, but I went ahead and numbered them 
anyway, just out of an abundance of precaution. Got the water pump ceiling surface cleaned up. Got a new seal in here. So these seals, um, they make special drivers for all your seals. Um, but if you're like me and you're working at your garage, even a block of wood will just be just fine. As long as the seal goes in evenly, and you're not using anything that's gonna dent it, damage it, ruin the lip or damage the housing. So just a block of wood, hit, 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 check it, hit, hit, hit. And you know if you've bottomed out, when you look on the back side here and it's it won't let you go any further there's a lip so as long as you're mated evenly up against that lip you're going to be just fine so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my pick i'm going to pick out the gasket in here replace it with a new one clean up all these surfaces here apply a coat of rtv and then we'll work on uh plopping it into the car after that front cover coated in rtv um, but before I stick it on here, there's a couple of spots that need a special extra attention. Anywhere you see a crease or, a, or two pieces are coming together. So in this case, you got the head and the block right here. And then you got head and the block here where they meet. And then you can't see it, but around the corner there, it's the same thing. So anywhere where the head and the block meet, and then down there where the oil pan where the oil pan and the block meet, where's that, you can see that line, you wanna put a little extra dollop in each one of those locations just for added added protection from leaks. Okay, getting ready to put this on here. Uh, lubricate the lip to the uh, front cover seal right there with a little bit of uh, engine oil, make that lip pliable as it goes over the shaft there. You don't want that to um, roll. Well, this is more important. This is more important for when you put the harmonic balancer back on, but might as well do it now while it's out. So what the goal here is to get those dowel pins, you got a dowel pin there and a dowel pin there, lined up with the holes on the front cover and have it slide in in place. So those dowel pins should keep it in place um, while you put the bolts in. All right, so when you put the front cover bolts in here, each one of them have one of these little black black seals on it, right? And some of them were left in when I pulled them out and some of them weren't. So pay attention when you're putting them back in, try not to double them up. Okay, once you get all the front cover bolts in, they're all snug. And don't forget that plate you took off, the dust cover plate down here. I did, I had to pull the bolts back off, put it on. Um, the Torx is, um, 17 foot pounds and there's a sequence i don't know if you want to take a take a screenshot of that so you guys know the sequence but basically you're going to just go back and forth like this all the way around and then uh the bolts that are around the water pump also all right got the water pump on Orientation is a wee pole facing up. I don't really think you can put it in wrong. There's only really one way the bolts are all gonna line up. So uh, 89 inch pounds is the torque spec for the bolts. So the next step now, what I'm gonna do before I start putting pulleys and stuff on is I'm gonna start running the wires, get the wires all connected and cause there's some brackets and stuff I gotta hit, put back on here. All right, fast forwarded just a bit here. I got the valve covers on. One thing about this rear valve cover is it's really hard to get it in between this intake riser and slide it into place. So what you have to kind of do, I'm not sure if I explained this on the way out, but kind of get it in there. You gotta kind of tip it up and then kind of wedge it in and then down, sort of like that movement. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about if you have to do this job. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, the other option is just to remove the whole intake riser setup. Uh, but I decided against it for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it would have been easier. I don't know. Um, to each his own, I suppose. So the next thing I wanted to do is show you guys the difference in the, the plugs here. So I new set of NGK plugs for this thing, and I wanted to show you guys the difference in the gap. So here's the old plug I took out. Pretty good size gap, and then the new plug. Yeah, it's really hard to see in the camera, but 
I mean, it's quite the difference in the gap. Plus, if you look at the ground strap, if you look at the ground strap, it's kind of got a wear or a concave to it, which is indication that these things have been in there for a long, long, long time. So, um, figure what the heck, cost of six new spark plugs, make it run a little more efficient. I'm going to throw them in there. I got this far anyway. All right, so again, I fast forwarded because it's just basically at this point reassembling everything. You guys already watched me take off. Uh, belt orientation, I'm going to give you guys a hand on that. It's hard to actually explain it. So here's what it looks like, um, the belt orientation. Again, if you want to take a snapshot of that, that's the orientation. It looks like it's going over. Gosh, dang it. Good timing, huh? Anyway, you guys will see it. There's your snapshot. Um, got the intake on. Everything's bolted down. I'm just figuring out routing. Uh, got your your tensioner pulley down here. Remember that it, the tensioner pulley uses some of the front cover housing bolts. So make sure you um, know which ones. You don't have to torque those down. Of course, I did. And I pulled them back off like an idiot. But... Uh, live and learn right um, remember the alternator pulley i said during removal that you had to remove the pulley with the alternator but i found out that that was wrong too all i had to do was jack the engine up a little bit it could come out so shame on me for not thinking of that but there you go um so yeah everything's coming together really well got the power steering pump back mounted up and the reservoir mounted up i uh, got the belt on and i'm gonna leave the coils unplugged for now I, what i want to do is i want to crank it a little bit make sure um, oil starts pumping before i um, actually fire it off and make sure i did the work right because um, the oil pump i filled the cavities of the oil pump itself um, but i want to make sure it pumps and does its thing um, before actually trying to fire it all off um yeah so moving on Okay, so back at it here. This is day, I don't know, four, five, ten. I don't know. I'm um, getting down to the wire here. The last, one of the last things left for me to do is install the operator hose to the thermostat ports here. They call it thermostat port, but I don't really see a thermostat in there. Um, what I did was I replaced. There's an O-ring, and then there's a gasket. There's an O-ring there, and well, that's technically an O-ring too, just not exactly an O. Um, but what I like to do for these uh, round ones right here is I like to put a little bit of lubrication on them so that way when I go to put them back in they don't kind of roll on it. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. Just you can use oil. Ooh, fun. Ooh, that's enough. That's not really. This is a louver plate for bearings, but it works really good for this stuff. Um, that way it slides in easy and then it'll dry up and then you'll get a good, good nice seal. That way. You know, just ease of installation. Installation. That's what you want. Better. And we're gonna push this inside there. Like so. Oh yeah. And we'll bolt it. Just those two bolts and then we can put the engine mount back on. Topping it off with some coolant now. Watching for uh, any drips or leaks. You want to use uh, coolant for your GM vehicle. Um, you go to any auto parts store and it'll say GM for Dodge whatever on it. So um, in this case, this is kind of Dex Cool or the equivalent of Dex Cool. Um, you can get the concentrate if you want and pre-mix it, but I'm lazy and I just bought the 50/50 mix. Go ahead and put this air box back in here. 
just in the same way I took it out. Make sure the hose that's going in through the grill, make sure that's all lined up and it's going into there. And then uh, we'll bolt it down. Make sure you connect your, where is it? Your mass airflow sensor. Got mine pinned down here, come on. And lastly, we're gonna connect the intake piping. If I remember how this goes on here. There we go. And then don't forget your EGR, your, or not your EGR, your crankcase ventilation here from your valve cover. And then I still got some zip tying to do. I zip tie all these wires up, tighten this down, and we'll be ready to do a little test, I think. Okay, everything's basically buttoned up here. Everything's tied up, I got coolant in it, oil. I've already cranked it over without the coils, without the, uh, yeah, without the coil wires plugged in. It sounds good, it's cranking right, so we're gonna fire this thing up. Check engine light at the moment. Oh, there is one. I'll have to read that, see what that is. Sounds good though. There's something right. Let it run it for a while. Let the coolant circulate in through here before I go take it on a test drive. All right, I've had it sitting here running now for a good 10 minutes or so. Check engine light's been cleared. Nothing's come back. It sounds really good. We it up. It sounds good. Um, won't really know if I fix it by doing what I did until I actually go for a test drive. But for purposes of this video, that's that's all I'm going to put in there. Um, if you guys want me to update you in another week or so, let me know. I will, but uh, until then, thanks guys for watching. Uh, appreciate it. Um, if you like what I do on this channel, please consider subscribing. And then also, every once in a while, hit that like button, alright? Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.